I don't know if everybody knows everybody, but I'm not sure I know at least one person. So if we could just go around the room and introduce ourselves, starting with Marsha, would you do that? Right, yeah, sure. <clears throat> I'm Marsha Martin. I am the city council liaison uh, to this board, and I have been for the last five years because I won't give it up to another council member. I love it so much. <laughs> uh, so new members, please to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Ruth. Natalie taking notes. So I do have only one request. Could you second a motion? Say it loud enough so I know who you are doing it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, uh, Beth Bowles. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were pausing for that. <laughs> no, I, mean, I was somewhere else. I'm sorry, um, Beth Bowles. Randy Queen, I'm the Supportive Services Supervisor on the staff. Jeff Friesner, I'm with uh, Recreation, Library, and Museum. Um, Robin Mosica, I'm the Admin Assistant. Robin here. I'm not usually here. Just a guest today. <laughs> okay, so you're the famous Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Janine Tarrant. Um, on the board. This is my fourth year. I'm Sheila Conroy. I'm on the board, and I think this is my second or third year. Third year. I'm Mark Quintana, on board, and I brought a guest with me, Manuela Chavez. Did you want to tell what you do, Manuela? I'm the family liaison for the same Valley School District for the east side. I'm sorry, for the which, east which, side? No, for the Valley District. Same Green Valley. Okay. Yes. And I've invited Welcome. her to come in Thank to you. sit in the meeting and hopefully uh, sign up to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Dave Grona. I'm the recently elected uh, president, and this is my first, second meeting, actually. And I've been on the board for about a year and a half now. So I will say that since the last meeting, I thought I knew something about the senior center. I don't know anything. <laughs> and I've read a lot, studied a lot, and talked to people, and uh, I've learned a lot this last month. Hopefully, it'll help. Okay. Public invited to be heard. Is anybody here the public and want to be heard? If not, let's move to the minutes of the January 4 meeting. Uh, any corrections or additions to the minutes? I moved to approve. I thought the minutes were excellent. Moved to approve. Yeah. Last meeting was tough to follow, at least I, but I found it tough to follow, and we did a good job. Uh, I will say that I believe Art was at the meeting last time, January 4th. And the minutes I had uh, not listed as a, as a member, as a, having attended. Uh, how, how do I add some just, things? Just add it. Add just correct the minutes. Just make a note. Yeah, just make a note. Uh, I called me into order, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's on there. <laughs> I know you're on there. Um, I did a good job on it. Okay. Thank you, Ruth. And on the second, we were talking about uh, when, uh, when we elected Art. There was a second. I went back and I looked at the video, and I know there was a second. I just couldn't hear who it was for sure. Does anybody want to take credit for that or responsibility? Maybe I should say. I think I want to take credit for it. You do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Sorry that happened. That was my fault. Okay. The second was by Julie. Maybe you should screw it. And then the. Uh, Moved to back. approve with no corrections by Julie, seconded by, and again, uh, we didn't hear, I, I didn't hear it. Uh, I, I, you I, I seconded the, the minutes? Okay. Whatever. So you can make so that. So you, you made the motion to approve, right. and who seconded it? Yeah, you made the motion. Did we have a second? Oh, yeah. Yes, I'll second. Okay. All right. All right. Let's. Is it, if it's acceptable for everybody, we'll just say the motion was seconded. Because I, I can remember it, it was a motion, but I just can't remember it. Okay. Okay. I seconded it at the time. You can put my name. You did too. 
I've seconded, but okay, that I'm not sure if it was, but that's okay. okay. Well, can we put your name in there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm volunteering. <laughs> I'm volunteering. <laughs> you got to watch me. You might put me in a place I don't want to be, right? <laughs> All right. Are there any other corrections or additions to the minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion for. Well, we can, uh, I'll entertain, entertain a motion for approval. I thought we had ten minutes. It had to be moved as corrected. Oh, as corrected. Okay. Okay. Is there a motion? I make a motion okay. to uh, uh, correct the minutes as. Correct it. <laughs> <laughs> correct. Minutes as correct. Except there you go. Something like that. <laughs> right? That's my first Except time. Okay, is there a second? Correct. I'll second. Okay, Sheila seconds. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Technically, if uh, Sheila and I are in favor, say aye. Aye. Technically, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think under Robert's rules, I looked for it, I couldn't find it. Technically, a motion to approve the minutes, I don't think requires our second. So, uh, um, because a motion, a motion to second is usually just to make sure somebody agrees that they want it forward. So it begins with a second. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think a Robert Schur's order does say that you have to have a second. You're more comfortable with yeah. a second, we'll do it that way. All right. What I remember of it, I think you have to have a second. All right. All right. It doesn't stick in my head. Yeah. Robert's rules. Okay. Uh, so, old business. Let's see, where's my agenda? Do we not vote? Did we vote on the yeah. minutes? I probably did. We did yeah. just yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Julie and Sheila. Yeah. Were first. Well, I thought that's right. We're done, but. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. 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 And the first item is discussion of the Library Recreation Health Act proposal, the Johnson's uh, study, and so on. And Dave, Jeff, would you mind if we talked about the class uh, registration software? Sure. So, so she can go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I was going to suggest that as a matter of fact. Okay. Thank you. Let's move that. Uh, let's move to item B, the class registration system. Ronnie showed me a preview of that. Oops, uh, I thought that was pretty good. Okay. Robin. I don't know what you are want you? Me to talk about. Oh, so are, who's going to do so, it? Um, oh, hi, are we Ronnie. showing? Hi, Ronnie. Okay. I think we might. Okay. Yeah. Do, you want, do you want us to show it? Do you want us to pull it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So we're so, going to need a laptop HDMI. box. Okay. So, um, or I guess I'd be able to go to the table, but I don't know if everyone can see, but. You know, just stop I think she went explain. to get the yeah, caster. Yeah, it just takes a minute. Uh, so, so, well, do you mind if I raise my issues and then they might be addressed in what you have to say? Does that make sense? Uh, sure. It's related, it's that's related, it's, right? It's right, not too right. long, yeah. Okay. So I understand you have this CAN system, right? And it's difficult to manip manipulate within that with changes. So I asked a few people how it is to register, how they find that experience. And I have three scenarios. One woman was 70 plus years old, not very computer savvy. And so she looks at the web magazine, chooses her class, and then comes to the front desk and asks them to register for her. I talked to another woman, 47 years old, she's a tech writer professionally and therefore extremely computer savvy and she went through the system pretending she was me and a couple things popped up of concern to her that I'll mention and one was she uh, registered for a class but it didn't really come up as the name in the, in the, in the catalog because it was under big picture or something like that. And then she had to go in and find the one she wanted to, to click on. Um, she also was a little unnerved that you had to get into the cart three times in order to secure your, your the class you wanted to register for. 
Okay, so she was using her tablet and she had it in landscape mode and everything came up as it should, including the little message at the bottom that leads you to click on those things to put in your cart. However, if your tablet is in portrait mode, that little message does not show up at the bottom. And so you are totally frustrated on how do I proceed to, to register for these things I've chosen. Turn your tablet around. Um, she also wanted to go back and add some more classes and that took her to a, not back to the, to the go, but to a page of all the different types of classes you can register within the city. And it's called, under that category, she decided to use the adult 55 plus, and that did take her then to the go. Um, so the, I also asked at the front desk what it's like when the new go catalog comes out. And I was told there is a line starting at 7.30 of people wanting to register. And they don't answer the phone until 10 because there are so many people who want to register by using the staff at the front desk rather than doing it themselves. So then when they answer the phone at 10, then they're doing all the people who are calling in to register. So if there was some way to make this easier for people to use, I think he would reduce the amount of time that the front desk has to spend registering. Okay. That's it. Can I clarify about that phone call piece? Um, I think she was exaggerating. We answer the phone when we can, but if there are a lot of people in front of us, then we can't always get to the phones right away. But we do check messages a lot and return calls. So. Okay. So let me let me just kind of set this up a little bit. So Ruth, we have had heard those those uh, comments. Um, a number of the staff met it's late November or early December and looked at the system trying to identify ways to make things uh, better specifically for senior services. And I think what Robin will show us is some of those things that, that we've worked on to try to make that better, as well as the uh, Ronnie wants to show the uh, video that uh, Robin created on uh, kind of a tutorial on how to use the system as well. So Robin has it synced right now. So what she did is she went through and provided a video tutorial. Um, explaining the steps to register for a class, um, yet showing um, the mouse icon um, throughout the process. So she's showing you where to go, what to click on, uh, what comes up, what comes up in each, in each um, redirection. And then she prov again provides the, the, the tutorial explaining the process, explaining what you're seeing, explaining where it's going to take you, um, and, and just you know, she did a she did a very good job. Um, do you, taking a look at it for the first time, did you did you feel that was an easy process, something that you could watch? Yeah, I could watch. You through to um, register for a class. I I have never registered for a class. I have always been to the front desk, and so yeah, it seemed pretty straightforward to me. And so what, again, and Robin, thank you for putting this together. It just, it, it just simplifies the process. When you have somebody um, explaining it to you, you don't have to make that phone call. You don't have to wait for a return phone call if there is one, right? And you don't have to come down and wait in, in that line that we were just discussing. Those are all available options. But again, this is a, you know, a good solution to help identify the issue with registering online at home. So um, Robin, if you go ahead and when you click on it, it should maximize your... Yeah, so just so you all know, this is our homepage. So if people go directly to our website from the catalog, where it says the website, if they go to the city website and they look at senior services, um, this is our homepage. So it's front and center if you're looking at the senior center on the website. And we do have information here about how to view the catalog. And then we also have a link to our senior computer 
Tech Center or Senior Center Tech Connect website, so they can help people too. There are other older adults who volunteer for our senior computer programs. So we have, that's why we link to them because they can also help with any online struggles that people have. And then right here is the video on how to register online. So it's my understanding that you want me to play the video? Is that it, yeah. yeah, if you click on it, it should automatically maximize. And um, let me check volume for the on, on your link. Here's how to register online for senior center programs and activities. You can always find the link on our homepage at longmontcolorado.gov slash senior dash services. Now, if you've ever registered before in person or on the phone, you will already have an online account. So if you have an email on file with the senior center, you can click the links on the login screen for forgot username or forgot password and reset your information. If you're not getting those emails or you need further assistance, please don't hesitate to call us at 303 So it, it's freezing up right now. So we can hear her, but we can't see the slides. You may see activities. Through. So she's going to exit out and try and log back in. That's just a internet issue. It's not a, it's not a video issue that she created. One thing I'd like to say is we've all been frustrated about registering online never occurred to me before the effect that that has on the senior center staff. It, <laughs> but it does. It does. And so you've always registered by coming in, right? No, I register online. You do it online now. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Not very good. Janine, how about you? I've registered for two classes online and I, I didn't have any real struggles with it. I mean, to be honest, I was able to get into the class without an issue, but, you know, I'm probably pretty used to computers, and maybe more so than some people. So. Yes, and that's, I will, I will say that I've registered for plenty of classes online, and I've had, never had it. For what classes? For the plenty. TRX. Yeah, plenty, plenty of classes. Oh, plenty, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, so, when we talked, we identified that there are kind of three groups of people in registration. There are folks who are already comfortable registering online, mm -hmm. folks who are not comfortable, and if they got some assistance or some explanation, they might be able to get there and register online. So I think we're always going to have a group of people who are not mm -hmm. comfortable registering online no matter what we offer them. So we're always going to have that option at the front desk, mm -hmm. no matter what. But what Robin's trying to address here is how to help that middle group of people who, if they got some training, if they got some support, <coughs> some registering, registering online might be easier. Um, quick what question. Is there, is there also written directions, too, so that maybe they can have their little browser open so they can do a step-by-step? Step? Um, I don't know. I honestly, um, we had that meeting, and we had a few different solutions that we came up with. Yeah. But the only one I had time to work on is between now and then with this video. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think there might have been discussion about more prompts on the site itself, the registration site, to kind of help them maybe know what to do. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if that was able to get done yet. Gotcha. Just, okay. We're short staffed and yeah. Um, yeah. struggling so, to get all Well, the video is great. So if I were to use this, I would be on my computer trying to register and using this to figure out how to register. So I'd have to have two things open. Uh, you could, or you could that just that watch before. this first, and then my hope is that you watch this first, and then you can do it. You don't have to watch I just the simply won't thing. remember all those steps if it's new. Yeah, so Did it's there say, for you, but it? we can certainly try to type up some how-tos as well. Um, and I have walked people through it over the phone, too, so that's always an option. Someone just called me yesterday, and I was able to help her, and she was, once I got her to what she needed, she was like, oh, I can do this. Yeah, and she was once fine. you get it. So um, sometimes, to what I do is I print the instructions right. on my printer and put them right, right next to me because, like you, I can remember three yeah. things <laughs> beyond well, that. Good for you. So That's you'll see it. in the video that the reason we don't have very elaborate written instructions <coughs> is because it's very visual and it kind of depends on. Well, if you're looking at it like this, it might look like that. So it's kind of hard to like have complete instructions that are written that work for everybody, but we can certainly put something out there that can help with that. Um, and also just to touch base on, I appreciate the concern for the burden on the front desk, but it's not really a burden to us that people are registering in person. That's just kind of how we work. Um, the one thing that would concern me is if we push and a lot of people register online, and then at 8 o'clock when those people get here to register in person, things are getting full. 
<laughs> because everyone's registering online. So there's a delicate balance there to keep in mind. So but what's the end place? What's the problem with everybody registering online? If 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 some people if if more and more people register online, but some people will still always want to come in no matter what, even if they understand how to do it online, they will always want to come in. So I would hate for 8.15, I had someone who was here at 8 o'clock, finally got to me to register, and now the class is full because a bunch of people got on at 8 o'clock and registered for the class online. That would be a real incentive for them to learn how to do it online. <laughs> yeah, I'm just letting you know that's yeah, yeah. could also happen. No matter what, so, again, like I think that mm -hmm. both of them said okay. that, that there uh, will uh, always be a contingent that wants to register in person no matter what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So and I want to respect that. Too. Yeah, yeah. And that's just I've got a question. Um, I'm like I said, I've never done this before. Do you have to go to two websites? Go to to the senior center and or the city, or is that all? Just go to the the city website and then you just click from. Yeah, there. so you'll see. I'll show you in this video okay. how to all get right. there from the city website. So it's a separate website from the city website, but you. You get there from the site. It's, it's a link on the site. Yeah. Okay. And when we send out our email newsletters, so we send out a newsletter and we try to get it out every other week, but sometimes we're behind. Um, if we're promoting a class, we link to that specific class in the email. So if you see the class and say, I want to sign up for that, you just click the link and it takes you right to the registration for that class. So we're trying to make it easier for people. <coughs> so does anyone have any other comments before I play this? In your center programs and activities. You can always find the link on our homepage at longmontcolorado.gov slash senior dash services. Now, if you've ever registered before in person or on the phone, you yeah, already have an online. <laughs> the internet's not playing. Try minimizing, well try minimizing the screen. I got my owl. Hmm. Let's see. Nope, nope. Um, <laughs> it play might adjust though. If not, then I can try and run it off my computer. Account. So okay. if you have an email on file with the senior center. So. It'll be, you a can click on link. It'll be a bit of a smaller screen, um, but you're casting. We can attach an HDMI cord to your yeah, computer. Yeah, you're to store it by cloud. But yeah, try what you're doing as well. Because <laughs> it's not blurry the people that have watched it, right? Because I didn't. No, it was, no, it was not blurry. <laughs> okay. where I'm plugging it. I think it's in the computer box. I'm just going to exit out of this. But if you want to see, so this is our homepage, and if you click on register for a class, it takes you to that registration website, which is right there. And the link that you click on from our homepage takes you to a search. It's like a filtered search, so it shows you all of our programs already. Um, and then we're gonna plug in Ronnie's computer. You wanna sit here, Ronnie? <laughs> oh, it's okay. I'll trade you that place since we're here. Sure. The glories of you. technology. You're welcome. Yes. While we're waiting on this, a question I have is: this is in Spanish as well? Uh, no. No. So we Spanish. don't have a large population of our Spanish right. uh, community that actually register at all. So that's right. another issue we're trying to tackle. Sorry, so if they start it's registering it's and they want to register online, then of course we would provide yeah. those resources. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's one of the things our Spanish programmer will work on once we get them hired, is how to get folks to register for programs at all in Spanish. <laughs> all right. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Register online for senior center programs and activities. You can always find the link on our homepage at longmontcolorado.gov. Now, if you've ever registered before in person or on the phone, you already have an online account. So if you have an email on file with the Senior Center, you can click the links on the login screen for a forgot username or forgot password and reset your information. If you're not getting those emails or you need further assistance, please don't hesitate to call us at 303-651. 8411. You may see activities unavailable online. Um, that's usually due to the fact that they've already started or it's too close to the start time. So just call us if you have any issues with finding a class online. Now on our home page, you can click the register for a class button. And it will take you to a page that looks like this with all of our activities. Um, you may also get a, a page that looks like this with more categories you can click on. Um, so either way, you can click on the category um, and it'll take you to the search screen. 
So you can search by activity code, so that number in front of the activity in your catalog. Just make sure you only search the first six digits for the decimal point. You can also refine your search by category or location, senior center, or things like that. So when you get the results of your search, um, you will see the titles of all the activities, but you will need to click on it to get more information. So it's important to note that if the class is part of a series, um, you might just see the title for the series and not the individual class title until you click on it and see more information. Um, so it'll tell you the date, the time, the price for the activity, and if it's full or if it's a wait list. And you can add a wait list um, online. So once you find the activities you want, you can just keep going and find everything that you want. And just check the box under the add to cart list and once you check that box this bar down here is going to pop up and as i've added more activities they've added to this bar as well so i'm not finished yet i have to then click add to cart again so it's a two-step process to check the box and then click add to cart at the bottom and that's what doesn't some show screens might not show this long. bar so you might have to yeah. scroll yeah, or adjust your screen a little bit yeah i just said that so once you're ready you can click add to cart and this is where you would be prompted to log in if you're not logged in already. And then it's going to list all the family members in your household that are eligible for this activity. So if you have more than one person in your account, it will list everyone's name here. So you just need to select who is doing the activity. Um, and it's only going to show people who are 55 of age and better because um, we have age restrictions on our activities. So if you don't have your age in the system, then it won't let you sign up. So select what you want and click continue. And this is where it will take you to your shopping cart. You can see first it'll tell you if it's full. So we're on the wait list for a couple of activities. And it'll tell you if it conflicts with another program. And then you can see everything that you are signing up for. You can remove it or keep it in your cart. And then you can proceed to checkout or you can continue shopping and add more items to your cart. So once you proceed to checkout, um, you will just need to enter your payment information and make sure your contact info is up to date. Select that you're not a robot and confirm the transaction. And that's all you need to do. Um, you will be emailed a receipt, but if you need to check on your, um, sis your status, um, you can go to here with your account name and view your receipts again, view your household calendar, things like that. And that's all you need to register. Thank you. Well done, Robin. Thank you for doing that. But yeah. it also well, points out how complicated. Yeah, and so I this I just want to clarify. We already had a video. Um, I just updated it because our website changed. So we've had this video for a long time. Um, but yes, I understand that it's complicated. But there's really nothing we can do about the way it works. We can just help people understand it better. Right. So. So, so is this is this a modification to? the existing system, or is this a brand new? Uh, um, so oh. we just, the system has been the same. It's just like a year or two ago, the, the website changed the way it looked. So some of the pages look different or the colors look different. So I had an old video that was showing an old, old new site. So I just updated it and tried to add in some of the other um, issues that I was hearing. So okay. nothing has really been updated functionally. It was just the design of the website. Cosmetically. Cosmetically. Yeah. Well, what does everybody think? I think it's great. I think it's good. I have to use it to tell. Yeah, yeah. 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 Marsha. Yes, um, I, um, I'm wondering, this assumes that you already have an account um, from other parts of the city website, like the permitting and stuff. I always get roadblocked because my account seems to expire all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, so did the, you talk, is there a way to, to talk about what you actually have to do to get an account? Yeah, I, I did actually say that in the very beginning um, when I was showing mm -hmm. the Word document on the screen. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, if, if you've already, it's not your utility billing account, it's if you have an account with the rec center, like you've done a rec center class city. or a museum, a, a class or something, then you're in the system. So I did try to explain that, and I said, you, you already have an account. You might not know how to log in, so click forgot password, or just call us. So Okay, so, kind of but that isn't what creating an account means. So you sort of said, if you've already shared your email with us, how do you create an account? 
you go to City of Longmont you, you, website, and that's where I created my account, and I can get into the museum, I can get into the yes, rent, rent department, anything. Yeah. It's all one account, but if you've never created an account, you have not really said how you do that. Um, so if, I mean, I can say that, say it right now, and then it, maybe it needs to be its own separate thing because I, I didn't want to put, it should be its own separate I didn't thing. want to put too much in that video. Like no, you're, you're right. It should video. be a separate thing, creating an account. How to well, create a city and it's really, account, right? It, yeah, it's, it's rec, it's museum, it's everything. senior it's, center. It's not everything, though. It's confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's only for rec, like, like yeah. class. It doesn't, our, this software does not communicate with any other software within the city. So if you're in permitting, it's not going to talk to uh, recreation, right? Yeah. But it, but if you're t if if you've only had like Union Reservoir passes before, you can still use that same account for this. Should be able to, yes. Yeah, and the museum. And the museum, yeah. Well, I don't have an account. I've never gotten an account. Can well, I you use do this? have an account because you've registered in person with us. Okay. So yeah. that's the issue. But when you're on the screen, if you're adding things to your cart and you're not signed in, it's going to prompt you to create an account anyway. Which I did say briefly in the video, but I didn't go into how you're correct. So um, I'm not logged in right now. So it's going to ask me to sign in. And then there's that box that says, you may have already already have an account if you have registered for programs or activities with recreation, senior services, firing range, or museum. Use forgot username link below to check your email address. And then down here it says, it's that forgot your name, forgot password. Don't have an account? Sign up now. Oh. So the system yeah. prompts you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. And then you just put in your information. So we would start well, from it, scratch. To me, mm -hmm. in an we ideal world, and Jeff is assured me it can't can happen with the current system we have, is that if you pull up to go online, you click on the class you want, and it goes into your cart. Right. And you pay for it. I mean, in an ideal, but the go online is sort of like a PDF, so there's not linking to anything to get it to click on and, and I don't know if it can happen that way. But ideally, I think it should, but that's just me. Well, I'm thinking that, uh, oh, does everybody think this is pretty good? I do. I do. Oh, this is excellent. So yeah. I'm thinking, good job. you know, let's give it a shot. When can you implement this? It's already been implemented. Oh, it's already? Okay. Yeah. It's live on board. Well, how about giving it a three, four, or five month trial? And then come back and feedback. give us a report. From who? But yeah, it's already been one. Well, it's from the people that administer. Yeah. No, oh, there's always this been isn't a video. new. No, it's well, this, not new. The, the video is new. Right. The system is not new. Yeah, I know the system is not new. But this sort of information is new, right? So we will take comment as people are, are communicating with us and uh Mid summer, we'll uh, report back on what the feedback is. I think the general thing that I've heard overall with the system is that once you get it figured out, it's pretty easy. Yeah. But it is difficult to get that initial thing done. And that's why we're looking at uh, continuing to do more videos and uh, what I will call the cheat sheets so that I'm, I'm like some of you where I like to have it setting in writing next to me so I can keep referring back. So those are things that we'll continue to do to try to make the experience better than it is right now. Do we have more people using the computer or walking in? Um, for the senior center, we are primarily in person or by the by I'm phone. sorry. For the senior center, we are primarily in person registrations. That's majority. We, can have, we have a statistic, okay. but for the rec center, I believe it's more We're web. about 60 40 now. How about here? I don't know the exact percentage, okay. but it's, it's more here. It's about 25% <laughs> registering online. We took a look at some of the stats last year. Which is here. increasing because that number was much lower before. Well, we would hope it would increase, yeah. I think. And so right now, this video is just on our web page. It's just like there, and it's been there for a long, long time. Right. So maybe what we can do is try to promote it more. Like we could put it in our email newsletter, like here's this video. You're struggling to register online um, and just kind of make people aware that the video exists. Yeah. Like, that's one thing we could do. Well, go. As, we can put it up in the summer, go. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, if we are going it's to be okay. surveying so, our client concerns, is this one that should be on our, our survey? 
yeah, or could be. Uh, does that raise people's expectations or I think it's it's no, they're registered. Uh, re registration? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, it, no, it, I can't see it, but is there something about select language or something? I was just asking. Um, it says select language. Oh, that's just from Google Chrome. It's oh, a thing okay. that Google. So Google will automatically translate any page. So you can click on Spanish to see what it says. Okay. Google just translates everything on the screen. Yeah, that's not something we do. That's a Google function. Okay. But that's a good option. Great option. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of misunderstood. I thought this was brand new. So. No, 10, yeah. 10 plus years. Oh, really? But there are monthly updates that are sent to us that uh, are automatically put, put in there. And then we also have the option, and we have a list of things that we've requested to be done but by this system and the way the company works is once enough communities have made the same type of request that moves that request up in the level of priority and what's the name of the software it's called RecTrack, and it's owned by vermont systems, systems. I understand we have very few Hispanic that are doing this, but I'm sorry, but I'm naive on computers. But when they go to Google and it says to try and put it in Spanish, it will all be done in Spanish and they can register like that or not? I believe so. It would probably be something we'd want to have someone test because I don't think we've had experience with monolingual Spanish speakers registering okay. online. So it would be something we would want to. I guess look into. Why don't you try that yeah. out? I can try it. Yeah, why don't you try to register for it? And to reiterate, sort of yeah. problem A before that problem is just getting people to register for classes at all. Because right now, people share information about our classes in Spanish by word of mouth and a calling tree. And when we hire our bilingual three quarter time coordinator this year, it's one of their first goals is to talk to customers about what do you need to register in advance for a class at all. Mm. Good. Okay. Because I create registration numbers for every Spanish class, and zero people register for every Spanish class. But for instance, yesterday we had 14 people attend the Spanish class. They just don't register. So yeah. we've got to address that. Mm. Like, yeah. So much easier what's the core issue first? Yeah. yeah. And a note on that, um, we have a Spanish page on our Senior Center website. I pulled it up right here. But the city in general tries not to have Spanish-specific pages because Google has that translate option. So we don't need to create the extra work or a page that might have to be updated regularly, right, if, if Google will just translate it for us. But because the Senior Center has such a large Latino population that comes here, we at least tried to have a page that kind of touches on a few things that we do here. And does this say, uh, say what it's saying? Use Google Docs. Yeah, so this is um, already in Spanish. We, write, we wrote it in Spanish, but if we went to like a regular page, and the internet is really slow on this TV right now, but um, that translate button ran away, but I think there's a way to find it. <laughs> but that, that page in Spanish that you just showed, does it say anywhere to get um, to translate additional? pages or information into Spanish use Google? Um, I don't think it says that, so we can look into adding that. Mainly it says call Monica, because <laughs> Monica yeah. will help you. That's not a good but, idea. Yeah. Is this new to most of the folks in here? Yes. It is? No. For me, it is. Okay. Well, it certainly is for me. Well, does everybody think that this is uh, you know, good work? Yep. It's, it's a good system, what, what that is. Now, let me ask, uh, what are you going to do different from this point forward as far as registration? So what it sounds like what we're going to do is um, look at creating, uh, as mentioned, a handout option. So creating a link in here that provides the handout option so you can have a printable version while you're registering as well, because that's kind of what I'm hearing. Right? I like so, that too. So printable version, um, create uh, and then possibly doing another video on how to create a new account. So there's just, it's its own video. How to create an account, 
and then um, how to register for the classes right after that, right? Um, you're saying you want to put it on maybe a three, four month trial just to see if uh, to collect in person or you know, mm -hmm. real time feedback from, from our customers on, uh, on the registration process. Did it, was it easier? Um, is it more accessible to them now because of these directions and because of the handouts, these additional options? And so from there, we can um, bring that back in three or four months to kind of see. Well, that sounds reasonable to me. Yeah. Right. What it sounds to me are a lot of band aids to try and keep this together and working well. But I think as an, as an advisory board, we need to be communicating directly with the powers that be that we'd like to see this improved so we don't have to band aid, band aid, band aid. So, yeah. Now, that'll take a long time, it has to rise to the top as a, a yeah. direct track. But I. <laughs> So it's I think important to have our voice heard. So it's Absolutely. Really important. No, but, but as Jeff had mentioned, the system itself cannot right, change. Right. Yeah. So well, it can't unless we pressure. But it's not just our facility. No, Can you explain that better, Jeff? Yeah. Please? So right. the pressure, council, council can't do anything about this either, other than purchasing or funding a different system. Right. But what with the system we have, we have to work through Vermont. Right. Vermont. But, but Unless our voice gets there, right? As okay. well as others, we okay. don't know well, others. Right. The, what I'm hearing is that's possible. Of course, you can buy a new system, right? But the political will or the uh, the economics or the money simply isn't there right now. No, yeah. not right now. Plus, we're not convinced there's a better system out there not that is specific to recreation, registration, and reservation systems. Mm -hmm. You know when. When we went to bid to get this system, um, the other big name is is Class, and Class wanted to connect co collect all the money on behalf of the city, and then monthly they would send us the money, and we weren't really comfortable with that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's why we went with yeah. RecTrack, and there at that time, that those were really the two two options that we had. And so with that, um, because we can't make overnight changes, right. um, the only thing we could do is create better options, more awareness on how to, resources on how to register. So right now we have a, a video walking through. We can have um, a visual, the handout. The video also provides auditory uh, support, you know, and additionally in person, right? So there's, there's a lot of resources available to register. Um, using the system we currently have, and all it is is just making these resources accessible for everybody, uh, and everybody the opportunity to register using these. I have two thoughts. One, um, would there be a way if, if there are times of the month where classes are being registered and there are long lines uh, for the front desk to potentially have somebody? in the computer room to ask people in the line, hey, do you want to see how to mm -hmm. do this online? Because that would be one-to-one. That's where volunteers could help. Yeah, That's and have it be, be, because rather than wait in the line for a long time, I might be willing to go in and learn how to do it on the computer, mm -hmm. or to make one of our tech classes how to register online because we may have people come to the class. For a lot of people, they need face-to-face -face interaction with support, and those would be two ways I could think of to do that. That is one That's idea. a real yeah. estate idea. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. an excellent idea. Well, well, the other thing I would just suggest is, um, Ronnie, you might reach out to Dan over in recreation, and maybe on those busy days, the phones could be transferred to recreation and those that way the staff here is able to handle the lines and recreation could have help people that are calling in. That's a great idea. At least to help with some of that pressure. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. This is taking way more discussion than I thought. <laughs> I, I thought, thought we'd be done in 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, anyway. Did we uh, release Robin? If, 
If I yes. if I were, if I heard correctly, there are five Thanks, different Robin. options. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Sure. There are five different uh, additional things that you're going to do, and let's have a motion. I would suggest let's have a motion as to how we want to proceed in a time frame on what we want to follow. Can I just up. add briefly? I won't be able to do anything until the end of February. So before what? The end of February. Oh, so these yeah. things you're implementing are probably are going to fall to me, and I just want to Maybe be upfront and say I can't one, work on it until after our registration. So. Yeah, well, I'm thinking maybe three, four months or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion. Yeah. Uh, Do we need a motion? Yeah. To, no, well, I, I'd like, like to have a motion. Yeah. I'd like to move that we um, implement um, the suggestions that were brought up today um, by the next go. By the next go, which would be the summer one, in the summer one, which okay. would come out in May. In May, thank okay. you. <laughs> that's, that's about correct. What's we'll the deadline? What's the deadline for the next go to for content? I don't know. Um, March twentieth or so. Does that work? Robin, what or is that too time? soon? Well, content is not me. Content, you're just saying is put something in the go that says view this video. Yeah, right. I, I can do that today. <laughs> but right. put it in the summer go template. Yeah. That's easy. But the other changes we do need more time for. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Yes. So, any modif um, anything to go in the go is March twentieth. Did you say or the end of March? Yes. Okay. That gives you a couple of months. And is that sufficient time to? Well, I just in the go, you just want us to per point out that we have a video, right? Is that what we're doing? Just for the go. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we're looking at the additional options of the. So the other stuff wouldn't have to be done until May. Yeah, well, until, until we have. You said May, right? By the time of the next go, so that would be May. So we'll have a follow up discussion yeah. in May. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Robin. Okay, was there a second? Thank you so much, Robin. Yeah, thank that you. Was, yeah, good work. <laughs> was there a second to the motion? Second. Sheila seconds any further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No abstentions? Okay, motion carries. All right, we'll discuss it again in, uh, in May. All right. Um, okay, Jeff, do you want to move to item A? Sure. Um, so first off, did everybody get the documents that I forwarded after uh, our last meeting? No. You didn't get them? No, no. I did. You didn't get those There's a problem with the email list yeah. for the board. Okay. And I did get minutes and so on, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get, get the minutes. minutes. I didn't get anything. Okay. But that's okay. You can get them. So did anybody, sorry. Um, <laughs> Does, did anybody have any questions on those documents? They were sent as references as it relates to the potential election that we might have uh, in March. We didn't get them. I'm going to be honest, okay? Because I did get them and I actually read them. And they were like from 2018. Right. They, you know, it, it, you know, and that, and that's just my, my feeling was that I don't know how appropriate they are to today. And I mean, the basic concepts of the needs, I think, are the basic concepts. That's, that, that's one thing. But I found that I wouldn't want to make decisions about, you know, what's going to be needed tax-wise in this community based on documents that are from 2018 and that's just my opinion and those were sent only as reference for for past um, master plans or strategic plan right. they weren't represented to try to explain what why we need what we right. are proposing right now yeah I, re I read through them too pretty closely I didn't read them item by item line by line or anything like that but um, you know, I, I kind of agree with Janine that, uh, you know, it was interesting. The part that I thought most useful is the demographic information, uh, and I still think that that's uh, worthwhile. 
But uh, other than that, it wasn't specifically related to us, so it was um, interesting, but uh, limited. Do we not have enough? I just see that pile going the other way. Oh, okay. When, when I looked at that and, I, and a lot of, I guess, a concern was the hockey mm -hmm. ice yes. again. Mm -hmm. but it's not there. That was. Listen, what we got. Well, Jeff, if it, you sent out the, the hockey thing, no wonder but, everybody is confused. Well, but that was what everybody asked for, right? right? Yeah. That I was what? not telling you that had anything to do with that election. Okay. So just, you did say it was from 2018 as yes. well. Yes. Okay. Yes. You did. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. So it's, all, it's, a, it's a little dated. It is the ice rink part of what might be considered. Oh. No. No. Okay. No. So I want to know. No, like like Jeff said, this is part of a a different effort. Right. What we're looking at now is more uh, a larger version of what is at the Longmont Recreation Center. Yeah. I I don't know if anybody has any other comments. Fine. I just I just assume we're moving on. To what, okay. What got now. So I apologize, but. I, for sending that out, I, I thought we had you talked did, about it. We asked it. for it. It okay. came up and we asked for it. Yes. And the performing arts um, is the most up to date as well. And Marcia, mm -hmm. you might jump in here. Um, it's my understanding that another group is looking at that. But is there are there any questions specific to the per performing arts? Because I think Marcia has the most information on Yeah. Did you send out a link to the Johnson study? Yeah. Yes. Okay, because that really is up to date yeah. uh, in terms of, of what the proposal is. Um, there is, be, because we know that that uh, Longmont kind of isn't, doesn't <coughs> consider itself a rich enough community to fund something like, uh, you know, a full service performing arts center, there is a consortium of private donors that is proposing to essentially raise half the money. Uh, Thirty-five million dollars um, to uh, grant that to the city if the city will will match it with a a little more than match it with a forty-five million dollar bond issue, but that really cuts the you know the the tax increase down a lot, and the tax wouldn't come in until and if that those private donor donors actually have the whole committed amount. So what the bond issue is going to be for, or what the ballot measure is going to be for, is would you, given that this private association donates $35 million to the city for the purpose, would you, assume, would you support a bond issue with a tax when that happens up to five years out? That's the, that's the question. Okay, so I just want to be clear, make sure everybody else is clear. This is only, that's worthwhile, but that's only indirectly related to our goals and our purposes. What? Right, but it, it's all, all tied to the potential tax initiative. So right. there are all those, right. there are things with the library, there are also uh, things with the museum that, and, and with parts that could be included. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the arts proposal, that's independent, right? No, no there, it's it, probably all going to be all, on all one. The, it's okay. all the, the, all right. the, the council has to refer okay. it, so right. these are just, this is a discussion of what's okay. being proposed. Okay. Right. So after the election is when this group would try to raise the money to match? Oh, the group is going to raise money anyway because they get to, they get to try three, uh, two more times even if this try fails. Mm -hmm. So there is a group um, uh, actually, the uh, uh, mostly seniors, um, there is a group that wants this, um, mostly for educational purposes, you know, but generally to enrich the cultural life of Longmont, um, uh, that is raising the money now. Are they raising money or are they making pledges? They are raising money with a, a, an escape clause that, that if this completely fails after the trigger interval, 
you can, you, you know, they will disperse the funds back to the donors. So they're actually getting funds. They're right? getting funds, okay. yeah. Can I ask, are, are all of these, this is going to be a vote on a tax, so are all of these combined it, as one thing? Because perhaps the cultural center is pushing it a little bit, but I think that the library really needs a lot of work and funding, as do some of the rec center programs. So are we, are we making comment on the potential taxation that's going to connect all of these as one thing and then decide later what gets, what goes to a cultural center, what goes to the rec center, what goes to, you know, the library. Okay, both and neither. So, <laughs> so what is, um, the, the, the council has, <coughs> has the power of referring all or none of these things to the ballot. That doesn't happen until May or later, okay? Um, so what's happening now is that um, the computations for how much tax increases would be associated with each project have been done, and you can look at them um, online from the uh, city portal. Um, so the council, the council portal, um, and. Mm -hmm. Those computations are approximate, you know, the, for example, the consortium of donors looked at that and said, you know what, let's put less of this burden on the people, but let's raise more. So I think that the city was going to, ha has it in the, in the draft as 50 million, it's going down to 45 million because the consortium said, we can do 5 million more. Um, but anyway... How it's grouped on the ballot is to be determined. But so what you can look at is uh, roughly how much tax is associated with each of many options for dollar, things the city dollar needs. wise or percentage wise both. Um, so you can say you know that there's going to be a, a this percent sales tax mm -hmm. and there's going to be a this much mill levy associated with each project. The city is preparing now, and it should go to the professionals to get structured right, a push survey, a scientific, you know, we randomize our, our population and contact people <coughs> at random to survey what people prefer. Um, so that, that kind of a survey is going to happen as well. Um, and... Uh, so, yeah, both and neither, right? <laughs> Does that is that clear? I know, I know it's kind of complicated, but that's where it is. So right. on the ballot, it won't be one question. It could be multiple. You might have the opportunity to vote yes on a rec center, uh -huh. yes on a library, yes on a, muse, a museum expansion, yes on performing arts, and yes on parks. You might. Yes or no. You might, but it's not likely that the council will structure it that way because that gives it the least likelihood of passing. Right. But, so we but don't that, know that. Right. Well, the reason I ask this is tax is tax, and it's a, a burden to a lot of people. And the other thing is, you know, we have a museum, and we have an auditorium there that's a pretty damn good one. I don't know if you go to those events there, but I do. It's full. I've, I've never do. seen it yeah. overcrowded. It's always oh. full. And, and I, I wonder about, you know, it, can we expand things or do we, have to, do we have to give up a rec center or a library to build a, 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 a whole new cultural center? Well, so those are things that taxpayers are going to want to know about. I will. Well, so if it is, if it's on the ballot and the ballot wins, the the city is committed to doing it. So there's no, you know, if if both the cultural center 
and the library extension and the rec center were all on the ballot, then in fact, the city would be committed to building all of them. So you're not you know, giving up. On the other hand, if, if the city, if the council refers them as one, two, three, four, five separate ballot questions, then yes, you end up with a, with a lower tax, but unless people voted for all of them, the city wouldn't be committed to, all, to any of them, only, only the ones that won. So in that case, who prioritizes what gets built first? The, well, <laughs> sorry, Marcia. That's an important question. That's a, that, no, honestly, that is, that is the, ma that's the, uh, that's a matter of operations in the city. Mm -hmm. Staff, the city manager's staff does that. Um, so, um, so I can't tell you that. What the only thing I can tell you in terms of prioritization is that the donor consortium is not asking the people to take the uh, performing arts center specifically on faith, but they're saying that it's going to be a public private partnership. There's no tax until the money is raised, and then it would be a private developer doing the work. Okay, and Janine, in general, it's the same way with any funded major project. Okay, so um, there is essentially an existing design for the rec center. It's just going to be an expansion. So what will happen is, that, you know, the, the city engineering staff isn't going to build this. Right. The city will do a bond issue and procure a contractor that will just go out and build it with their own resources. So it's perfectly possible that all of the different approved projects could be in going on simultaneously because they'd all have a different workforce. All right. Yeah. I have oh, one other Julie. thing I want to add. <clears throat> I think the one difference between with the uh, Performing Arts Center is that the Performing Arts Center actually brings in commerce to our community, which a lot of people in the community don't see that, right? So, um, so it would be bringing in thank you for coming you know, different performers from all aspects which would then work with the idea is that you pull from Boulder you pull from you know um, from Frederick you pull from all these other different communities bring these people in and then also along with that if our cultural center is um, successful it could promote um, people moving to Longmont for the fact that we have such an amazing community um, and services provided by our by our city. So. Yeah, certainly. Jeff. I, I don't have a whole lot. I, I will just I wanted okay. to share the tentative uh, timeline that has been developed with uh, as Marcia Marcia had mentioned, uh, polling will start happening uh, just as soon as the survey questions are finalized and we'll know polling results uh, hopefully sometime in March. And uh, I guess I would just ask that the board keep this on the agenda for every month and Ronnie and I and Brandy can come to you uh, along with Marsha's help and keep you up to speed with uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I've got, I've got a couple of questions. Okay. Um, the city marketing staff puts the survey together, is that right? They draft it, and then the the company that the city hires will put their two cents into it because that's professionally what what they do and word questions so that they're not leaning and uh, okay. and that's really the expertise that they help bring. In what areas are they going to have questions? They. I can answer that. I've reviewed okay. the draft. Okay. So the the. There's first set of questions about 12 existing city amenities that ask you whether you use it or not. And if you pick yes, you get to say why you use it. And if you pick no, you get to say why you don't use it. Um, then there are descriptions of the new projects as opposed to you know upgrade projects. Um, and uh, they ask people to prioritize them. 
And I think that those are, you know, so it would be like a ranked choice vote. Is anybody, everybody familiar with ranked choice voting at this point? Um, so there's, there's a section like that, or that's what Sandy Cedar proposed. <coughs> you know, the, the polling company may choose to do something entirely different. I'm not sure how that part works, but they're professionals. Um, and so we'll probably defer to them. Um, and then there is another section about groupings, you know, so if it was all the new projects together, would you vote for it? Or if it was all the parks and recreation, would you vote for that? And then all the cultural things together, which would group library, museum, and uh, performing arts, would you vote for that package? Um, so that's the, that's the general way that the, um, that the draft poll is structured. Again, I make no guarantees about mm -hmm. what the pros will end up with, but, but that's the kind of information that uh, we're looking for. And the link to the poll will be in the newsletter? No. How um, do people get it? The, the it, people will be contacted at random by the polling company, like a major political poll. So, yeah. so you don't get to, you know, get all your friends that are in favor of one certain thing together and get them all to vote. It's going to be a randomized poll. Um, so, um, you know, that's the way. And the other thing is that the city council is not bound by the results of the poll. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, what, I'm, I'm looking at this from the point of view of what the senior center get out of all of this. Right. And, you know, we had a lot of discussion, but there's no direct answers to that. Julie, I think it was you last time that said, we start looking at the rec center. And Jeff, you said that there would be space available at the rec center. I don't know what that implies, staff, programs, you know, whatever, yeah. maybe that's to be determined yet. So what I'm getting at, as far as the survey is concerned, there was something that was done in 2016 that's probably, it was pretty good. It's called Envision Longmont Aging Well. And uh, specifically, are there going to be questions related to you know, housing options, uh, access to information, supported services, transportation services, recreation, employment, those health and employment, uh, health caregiver support and education, all of those kinds of things are not new. Yeah. I would so, say no, those questions would not be asked. Okay. It's okay. more right. about the proposed um, projects that have been outlined in the presentation um, and nothing beyond that. Right. Those questions were part of the community conversations that a lot of the board participated in last year that the Area Agency on Aging did to update the Age Well Plan for the county, right. which will include specific information about Longmont. So, so those questions have been asked in a community-wide forum, so, and we'll get feedback probably this summer on the results of that. So something similar to that was done in 2016? Yes. Um, I would like to add some of my feedback on the poll was that there wasn't enough specific information for people to make their decisions. So in discussions, for example, about both the rec center and the upgrade to Centennial Pool, um, we've said, you know, we really miss that warm soaking pool that they used to have at the hospital. Um, could that be part of one of these projects? And the answer is yes, but it doesn't say anything about that being about that in this polling. So to me, that is an omission in the poll, and there needs to be at least a little bit more than there is about the nature of, of the, the project. Can that be added? At this well, point? I, that's that's why we gave feedback, right? That's why, the, right now, the only feedback has been from the council members. Um, Was but, that feedback given from the council members? Yes, this yeah. council member. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so um, I hope that it will be uh, a better poll because we've 
had a, a, an early chance of review. Um, and, and I hope that the other council members that are liaisons to other boards will have the same kind of, you know, feedback. Like, well, this is a big decision point. It should be in the poll. Um, so, uh, you know, we're working on it. It's it's in very, wouldn't you say, very preliminary stages yes. at this point, Jeff? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Rex said, are, are we looking at something similar to what we have now uh, on the yes. south end of town? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And, that, and, and we're still talking about either the east side. Are we? Is, is the east side being considered at all, or is it all? That actually art was one of my other um, pieces of feedback. Um, you know, right now the poll says it's going to be at Dry Creek Park, which is on the west side. Mm -hmm. And I said, Tim Bell. We know that we're having concerns about uh, youth engagement on the um, east side. The northeast, it, you know, is really a desert compared to the rest of the city in terms of of public amenities, and that's not right. You know, that's in my mind, that's a form of redlining. Right. Yes. Um. So. Um, I, for example, so we just also found out, you know, Susie and Chiquita's proposal about a, a sports dome to be sited up there north of Centennial. Um, the windfall money can't even be used for that. It has to be directly spent on, on activities with no capital investment whatsoever. So I said, you know, if we're, if we're going to have a amenities, we should, we should put a project that puts something useful in that location on the north side and and so i don't know whether that will do any good but um you know the the answer right now art is no and i think it's wrong you know the northeast part of longmont of which i live in mm -hmm. um is served by the ymca and there's scholarships and they're Thank easy you. to get oh Oh. You know, that might be a use for the windfall money, yes. because if it goes straight for for youth programs, the city could fund youth programs for the YMCA as part as with that windfall money. Thank you, Beth. Well, for and my point of bringing that yeah, up is, recreation. is that uh, I go to there, I go there, a lot of my neighbors go there, um, a lot of people in Northeast Longmont go there because it has what they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think we're going to have to move along. Yeah. Um, I told you before I wasn't very good about any meetings on time. I do better. Uh, Jeff, I think you're right. I think this will be a continuing item. And if everybody's okay with that, we'll put it on our next month's agenda also. We'll just continue the conversation. Maybe we'll have more information. Mm -hmm. On specifics at that time, I do have questions on the. Well, let me let me throw this out. Um, on the survey itself, on second thought, I'm gonna let that go. It gets, it gets to know. And I'll, we can talk offline for okay. the meeting. I'll, too. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a first. Okay. All right. Um, the uh, foot care RFP. Okay. So, I'd like to make a motion. All right. We need to drop this from the agenda because it's not going and hasn't in two years going to happen at the senior center for a whole big bunch of reasons, mostly being liability and, and duplication of services that are offered at the hospital. So, it, we never go anywhere with it. I'd like to see it removed from the agenda. Yes, Jeff. <laughs> you suck it? <laughs> no, I'm not seconding you. Okay. Yes. Right. <laughs> but bef before anybody seconds that, or if you want to second it and then we have a conversation, Ronnie has some pretty interesting information about this topic. So okay. I, have, oh, Ronnie? I have a lead. All right. All right. So, I have a meeting uh, in place to 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 see um, if, if these are services that can be provided here, and um, um, looking at all those details. So that's 
Yeah, conversation is yet to happen. It's it's scheduled uh, in the next week or so. I, I'd have I can tell you when I have to look at my schedule. Um, but it's with Colorado Visiting Nurses Association. So, um, like I said, it's a lead. It's a conversation I want to follow up on and um, see where that goes. And see if it's something we can bring back. And then if not, then then. Um, is liability an issue, Marsha? I think you brought that up last time, if I remember correctly. The liability involved, you know, if you have a diabetic, for example, something goes wrong. Now, when you said something about the city being looking at a fight, you didn't say that? I, right. uh, I may very well have. It's something I might have thought of, but right. yeah, it was, it was, does the city's. I'm thinking about you're self insured, right? Your yeah, the city is, is self insured. So I'm wondering if that somehow could be part of it. So, so I think one of the real advantages of the, the association that Ronnie's contacted or is that a number of the other uh, senior centers in our area are using them as a, as a service. I don't think that the goal is to really provide full care, it's to identify potential issues and then individuals would be referred to doctors. But I think it's a, a great first step. Am I misspeaking there? No. no. So yeah. would that require an RFP? Nope. Uh, or just an no. intergovernmental agreement? Something? I don't think we, they're governmental agency. We feel like uh, because we've had limited so Ronnie and I met with our purchasing department and talked about uh, whether it needed to be an RFP. Based on what, where we landed, we feel like this could be addressed through a personal services agreement uh, with, with them and, and wouldn't need to go to a, a full out <coughs> RFP. But if this doesn't work out, we have some guidance from purchasing that could take us to that. RFP if we needed to. Well, I kind of agree with Janine that we need to either do something with this or just get it off the agenda, forget about it. So how about if we get it off the agenda and when we have good news, we'll report back on it. <laughs> yes. Sounds and great. for me, because I know what used to be here. Yeah. Yeah. If you're dealing with visiting nurses, it is educational and evaluation, not treatment. Yeah. Uh, because nurses don't do diabetic foot care. So just to kind of put that in, to be very clear about what are they doing, what are they proposing to do? Uh, because they can do education, they can evaluate and make recommendations, but the treatment itself would not happen here. Really? All right. Really? I thought that was the whole point of it. <laughs> I, I don't, the, the, what purchasing explained to us was that when Michelle was here, she had tried a number of different times to get someone to provide a proposal to the point where we were having direct conversations with providers and still didn't get any uh, proposals. <coughs> so it doesn't appear like that service is going to be available. So the next best thing is, is what Ronnie has found with the right. Nursing Association. So as long as people are clear that it's education yes. and recommendation and not Treat. the Service. actual treatment. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, so they will okay. have to go somewhere else. Correct. Do you, do you want to and they'll have those resources available, I would assume. If well, the yeah. hospital does. Do you, no, you want to revise your motion? Do you want to revise your motion or withdraw your motion? Or? Well, um, just take it off. Shall we just? Well, I, I second it and, and just go for a report. <laughs> well, care oh, is, is not what's going to really happen. Evaluation is going to happen. Well, I believe there is the simple foot care of, of helping people who cannot take care of their own feet get their nails trimmed and, and if there is there is if you're not diabetic right? <laughs> you can be old and can't reach your feet and, I and still not be in danger all right well, well, that would be me i withdraw <laughs> they need to go to the doctor for that i will mm -hmm. withdraw oh, all right withdraw? uh you okay. withdraw the motion in that case you withdraw your second 
Okay. If, is it is it all right then if we uh, you bring that back next month? Is that yep. be enough time? Yep. And we'll discuss it further. Mm -hmm. We'll continue on the agenda, but with the objective, either we get something settled or withdraw it from the, uh, the agenda. Yeah. All right. Any more comment on that? No. All right. Uh, senior center cons uh, cons uh, customer survey questions. Yes. That would be. Oh, yeah. That's the name. Continuation of uh, two meetings ago, I guess, when it was first brought up. And uh, Jean offered to develop some questions that possibly could be used by the advisory uh, board to interview people or as a basis of interviews to uh, get additional feedback as far as the center's operation. Jean, do you want to elaborate on this or well, Ronnie? Ronnie actually and I met. Yep. And so yep. Ronnie, did you want to do that presentation? Sure, it doesn't matter. Oh, yes. Absolutely. So um, you know, the whole purpose of the last conversation was to identify um, or provide a survey um, focusing on our customer service specifically. So Janine, Janine and I met and uh, generated 10 questions. I know the goal was to come up with three, three of them. I'll have the board agree on three to focus on this. Collectively, we, it, it was noted that any, anything beyond three was too much and loses um, lose, loses the attention of anybody filling out the, the survey. So uh, we were focusing on, collectively, we all decided to focus on qualitative, not quantitative. So again, we, we came up with 10 questions uh, for, for the board to take a look at and see which three we'd like to move forward with. Again, focusing on customer service specifically here in our facility and then identifying what next steps, uh, how do we want to roll it out, um, and, and begin those conversations. So, and I'll go and just take a moment for everybody to read through the 10 and go from there. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Did you do that? Oh, I, okay. I'm sorry. I don't have a vote, so I gave one. Oh, okay. Do you need uh, I might want to add that um, in putting these together, this uh, the the three would be um, the first three, and that we discussed that we wanted these surveys to be ongoing. So it's more like prioritizing what three you might start with, knowing that down the road we might use other ones, other questions in here. So you said the first three are the ones that you no, no, felt no, no. Oh, you yeah, choose whatever oh, okay. three okay. you would prioritize. We talked about uh, you know rotating or having some number of board members doing this each month. That was one idea I talked about. Have you given any more thought to that? Anybody? <laughs> um, no, and I, and I think our conversation last time was to identify the questions and bring it back um, and then determining how we want to roll it out. Is it is it in a person survey? Is it a questionnaire we're providing um, at the end of each class session? Things like that. Um, so there, there was no clear direction on uh, on next steps. I, I, my understanding was we were going to discuss this um, at this meeting. Also, we decided, I have not decided, um, we discussed that, you know, if this is successful, we are getting plenty of feedback and that responses, then from, from this one, moving on to different components, right? So this one's customer service. Um, next one could be, I can't remember what we discussed, uh, Program focused, uh, you know, um, what we are offering um, at, at our facility. Um, 
I don't know, I, I can't remember, but it was, it was just focusing on different aspects, uh, not not staying in that customer service realm. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. My question is, why, is there a reason why we have not, I don't know how to put it, that the information of ethnicity, is that something that would be beneficial or not or, or, or not necessary here? And I'll be honest with you, I, I just, you know, I don't come here often, but I don't see a whole lot of Hispanic population here. I think probably the ones I do see many times are the ones that here see to, to see Veronica or, or some of those folks. And uh, I was just wondering, is that something that's needed or does, does it matter? Or? The demographic thing, I, I think that that provides important information, right. but, but it doesn't fall into the guidelines that you all um, right. talked about last month. Because if you do demographics, you're going to have three questions just in that, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you only yeah. wanted three total. I, I will share that our database that tracks case management information is probably going to start requiring ethnicity as an information that we put in with the option of we don't know <laughs> if people have not disclosed that. Um, but I don't think that RecTrack requires that for people okay. to register for classes or anything. Okay. Okay, I just so it's a good question. And I wish it did. I can tell you anecdotally, um, our Spanish speaking customers come to see Veronica and Melissa quite a bit mm -hmm. um, to programs and drop in groups that are in so Spanish and playing pool at oh, lunch. Pool. Right, playing pool. <laughs> yeah. Those are the, the big captures. Okay. So uh, I'm going to throw this out there, and I don't, I don't, I don't know how politically correct this is or or anything, but I just think that. What I find interesting is that it is predominantly white people that come to um, senior centers. And I'm wondering if culturally, with the Hispanic community, the Japanese community, all these other communities, is it culturally something that they they utilize or take part in? I mean, like, I know with the Hispanic community, they're very family oriented. Mm -hmm. They have their right? own communities. They have their own community that they connect with, where honestly, white people, mm -hmm. you know, or the Caucasians, we, th there are a lot of people who do not even connect with their family. And so that's where I feel like the senior center comes into play, is that it gives them a community that they may not have, because we have people who have moved here from, you know, all other areas of the country, and maybe their family isn't here. So I'm wondering how much that plays into the fact that we don't have a lot of diversity here at the senior center. Probably a lot. You know, I don't know. I mean, but I think it could be something that we should look at and consider. You know, and then yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, I, I just would like to see a lot more, you know, start attending some of our things. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe one of the things that we look at is like for the Cinco de Mayo and for the Dia de los Muertos is maybe we have a booth there or something so that we can try to encourage, because that's where you're going to see, just like yeah. you said, a, a, a lot more of the Hispanic community and that we can give them paperwork or resources or whatever on, on the senior mm -hmm. center. I just, you know, the, the reason... I say that is because they, we have a great record center. I mean, the okay. senior center here. There is so much to, to offer. And for some reason, I don't know that they're being reached or why they're not coming in. You know, Manuela, she works a school district and she's a parent contact or something. So I'm hoping that she gets on the board and she might be able to encourage, you know, more people to, to get involved here. I, I don't want to see these people sitting at home and on their couch and, and, and yeah. doing absolutely nothing. Right. Uh, and I just had a friend of mine from Brighton, 68 years old, and uh, we used to get together for breakfast, a few of us from Brighton, and 
he was at the last breakfast. The next thing, he has a heart attack and dies. But I don't know if he was involved in anything. And obviously, yeah. we're all concerned about exercise, health, yeah. etc. You had mentioned Cinco de Mayo. We do always have a booth that mm-hmm. staff and volunteers man at Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. And part of our three-quarter time bilingual recreation program or position that we're going to hire is doing outreach. That, that is Good. part of what we have worked into that job description. Great. That's good. Growing good the Spanish programming that we have, the, speaking to the Spanish speaking community specifically, Marshall. growing those programs. Um, I just wanted to ask is it possible that the, the location is, is a part of the, the problem? You know, this is a white neighborhood. How many of the people were from close around here? Um, if there were you know, a shuttle from some place central on the um, on the northeast side or from down around countryside in Southmore would for specific events would, would that get people involved? But is, how much of a problem is it that, you know, one partner is working still and the other partner is sitting at home because it's a one car family? I'm just wondering. I think it's pretty Julie. accessible from northeast. Is it? Oh yeah, I don't know. I'm from Northeast, and I think this location but, is very accessible. But you're driving here. Yeah. Yeah. So or riding my bike. It. Yeah. So um, my question, um, I guess it would be with Ryan and you, Ron, well, Ronnie and Jeff, is um, how many in in the activities that we have here? How many of those activities are conducted um, by an instructor that is Hispanic? Do we? All of the Spanish programs are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if that was a, a barrier as well. Or, and that's why we have programs that are just in Spanish. Gotcha. Because, okay. we, yes, we have bilingual folks who can attend programs in English. And we yeah. have ample offerings in English. Yeah. But the Spanish options are limited. Yeah. Uh, okay. this, this is all important, but I would like to defer a discussion, further discussion on this particular survey. Uh, we got a couple of other things. I wanted to, to say some things about the annual report that's relevant to all of this that we're talking about. But first, I'd like to talk about the board members. Uh, we have for short two board members, and we have a potential one that you brought in today. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the process is. Uh, we just um, it's a process with new members on. So I, you you will need to wait until the mid-year application process. Okay. I believe the applications are taken April, May with appointments to take place in June. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the council does not appoint new members outside of <laughs> June and okay. the end of That's the That's what year. happened to me. I was appointed mid-year. Yeah. Okay. So they, uh, the, the applications will be available April and May? Mm-hmm. I will verify that and I will email everybody with that date. Okay. Did you say you had an, another person that might be interested? Yes, uh, Yolanda Salinas. She's actually on the oh, yeah, comité. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're checking it. We'll see if it's checking it. see if it's going to if that is considered a city employee or not. Yeah. Well, she's definitely not a city employee, but I don't know whether there's you know city funded independent agencies may or may not be able to serve on this board, but but we can find out today. You know, Art and I discussed it kind of over the weekend, yeah, so I, uh, I, I don't know. Um, we should, while we're having this discussion, Art and I did meet with uh, Carmen Ramirez about how to do um, outreach into the Hispanic community specifically, and um, and we did talk, and also we talked about, low, you know, lower income communities, because, I mean, face it, guys, we're not exactly represented there either. And um, uh, so we have some ideas to work about making the uh, uh, application more uh, more simple. We just learned something today about Spanish. Maybe we don't need a whole Spanish. We just need to be sure that it's available on the website in the way that the translator works on it. Um, so you know, there's there's a whole bunch of things um, that we've kind of got going. We have that April deadline to implement some of them, but, but we have started the process of recruiting a more diverse board 
for the new seats than we have now, in, yeah. in, in addition to Art's direct recruiting efforts. So and, thank you. and I think that uh, Carmen brought up the idea of inviting them to read and then maybe doing a one-on-one -on -one with them. If And I will get back with mm -hmm. Carmen, I mean with uh, Manuela on that. She sounds like she's interested, so. And I hope that Rhonda is able to serve also. That'd be great. What's Will you bring that back then uh, at our next meeting? What's that? Will you bring it back next yeah. meeting? Yes. 26. Okay. 26. So that would mean four. four. How many board members? 12? Nine. Nine. I mean, that's how many we have? Yep. Yeah. Nine. So 24% would we be. Two vacancies. Three. Three. Yeah. Three. Okay. If it was proportional, you know, we're not on a quota system right. or anything. Well, but if it were proportional, there would be three. Okay. All right. Anybody that has any ideas for members, uh, let us know. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on one. But she's not Hispanic, she's bilingual. She was born in Chile. Chile. Uh, uh, how about old white guys? <laughs> yeah. uh, honestly, men, so or, or men, or men in general, general. Men in general <laughs> yeah. is an underrepresented group. Well, yeah. I look around and I see art. <laughs> I say, yeah. you only see one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to drop down to uh, uh, to the annual report, and I've got a point of view that I want to throw out on the table. And uh, if I'm all wet, that's fine. You can tell me that I'm all wet. I'll be hurt deeply, but that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter too much. Um, I see, I mentioned before in my campaign speech that, that we really need to make more uh, specific proposals, recommendations to the county council if we're going to have an impact. Uh, you know, we have impact, but I think we could have more impact if we made recommendations based on some good data, good logic, and you know, that sort of thing. And so then the question is, um, how do you do it? And I've thought about that quite a bit. I know it's very easy to avoid, to uh, not avoid, but ignore advisory boards. And so a couple of things. On the one hand, demographics, we've been talking about is pretty much of an old white board and pretty much of an old white clientele. You know, it really is. And that, that's nobody's fault. That's just basically how it's evolved. That's the way I see it. Uh, and I want to be clear that I think the staff is a, a wonderful staff and they do a wonderful job, and I think Brandy did just a great job this last year, and you're going to do a great job too. <clears throat> but I, when you wonder about the services, and we have a hundred thousand people, and of those that are 55 and older, it's almost 30 percent of our population. And if you take 30% of our population and you set, take it times 8% of the poverty rate in this town, that's 24, 2,500 people right off the top. And you can make the same kind of argument with Hispanics, with the disabled, you know, veterans, you name it. I don't, I think a lot of groups are really underrepresented. And so is that something that we really want to work on to increase diversity? to have all groups of our community represented. Because uh, I do think we have something of a problem right now. And so that's 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 one issue. Uh, and I and that's kind of a policy decision in my opinion, unless legally there's some issue. So I'm looking at how the decision process works in, in the city. I know how big government works because I've worked for one for 25 years, but it's not, it's not all the same. But you have your budgetary process. Ronnie, you'll be submitting your budget about May to Christina, something like that. Is that about right? Yep. And then Christina will look that over, and then you'll have some sort of internal uh, deadline. That'll have to go to the city manager and the assistant city manager, I presume. And from there it goes to finance, and from finance it goes to the budget division within the finance. So all that stuff is going to be going on in summer. And then along with this, uh, I looked up a little bit on this priority budgeting system that the, the 
the city users. I don't understand it very well. I didn't spend a lot of time on it. But I do know you have a, a fairly new system that uses priorities to try to allocate budget. And I looked at some of the uh, organizations within the city, and guess who has the top scores? You know, um, well, I assume it's probably about a five-point scale. I'm not sure, but safety, uh, you know, public um, safety, the police and fire, police and fire, I think uh, did well. I think they had a rating of three on this priority system, and. I looked around for senior, uh, senior services, you know what senior services got in terms of priority? Zero. And so I don't think zero really means zero. Of course they get resources. But in terms of the hierarchy of things, you know, they don't get a whole lot of attention. So I'm looking, you know, how can we have impact? Going back to the idea that we have Brown, you told me this before. But the total number of people that you have and in in you serve in a year is what is it, a couple thousand, three thousand? On, so, on just the supportive services side? Yeah, yeah. I don't have the numbers yet for 2022 because our reports aren't working, but um, I believe it was like 1,100 new clients and 700 continuing clients. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I know you do a good job. You know, I, the services are good. It's just that it's not anywhere near meeting this, uh, this, the need as far as I can see. And you're shaking your head as if you would agree. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm sure there's all, all kinds of things more that we can do or the city could do. There's always a question of money. That's why I came back to you know, so I was looking into the money. Aspect of it. So, uh, you know, how do you have impact? Going back to the budget process, you guys will be submitting your, your, your budget to Christina and the, the, the budget folks will start working on it. And then I suppose there's going to be a lot of internal discussions between the finance people, department heads, and the city council. And they'll eventually come to a decision. They'll use this priority-based system, I suppose, to some extent. And that's how the budget's going. I could add to something to that. Um, first of all, you're a little late in terms of the times to communicate budgetary needs to I the staff. For this year. For this year. For this year yeah. Well, or for any year, it's not the middle of the summer that they say they're in the budget process, but for a department or a, a division to get its budgetary requests in, it's more like April because everybody starts adding up and doing it and applying the process really early. And by the time these discussions come before the city and the council over the summer, it's all really baked. You know, the, the staff who, really, who has most of the power has done their work. Now, I will say that pandemic time, I don't remember how many, which year this was, but the last time that priority-based budgeting was, was explained to the council, we said, wait a minute, equity is not one of the steps in your prioritization ladder, and we want it in there. So the, um, the prioritization uh, algorithm that is priority-based budgeting has supposed to have changed to include a bigger weight for social equity, and well, bigger than zero, depends on whether you're adding or multiplying, but, um, but anyway, that change is supposed to have been there, which would mean that if we do a better job at equity as, an, uh, as a department and as a board, it should help us in the priorities. Um, and I think, you know, this, that, for example, is a resolution that this board could make is that we, uh, you know, we want to say that the senior center um, is committed to enhancing social equity for uh, our um, marginalized 
service population and we ask that the council uh, enable us budgetarily to prioritize that, that would be a, a resolution that could come forward to council um, just saying, you know, that would have to have an awful lot of effect in that. I would, if, if anything is going to have an effect on the budget process, that would do it. A resolution? A resolution by this board that we bring forward to the council um, and, and, you know, just ask the council to adopt it. I pretty much guarantee that the council we have now would adopt it. Uh, but you're not saying it's too late to make that resolution for this budgetary cycle. No, it's only it's the first of February, right? Right. And and the work is being done now. Right. You know, the, the, uh, really, what's happening? The requests are going in now for the next two or three months. Right. And and then you know it gets sifted and prioritized over the summer. But but yeah, getting it, getting something like that in. Um, in the next couple of months could have an effect, yeah. Okay, that's, that's good to hear. Um, so here's my plan. I do have a plan. You've got it all mapped out, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've thought, I've thought of a pro, an approach along with what you're thinking. And that is we have our annual report. Now, Brand, I think you told me there's no specific deadline on that. So we could kind of coordinate that with the full budgetary process. So I'm thinking that we, we build on the draft that you put out as far as the accomplishments and the activities of the board. And I miss a couple of those meetings, so I don't even know what they talked about basically, but uh, we could enhance, enlarge, uh, put a little more meat on, on the activities that we did and on the basis of that, we could uh, make some recommendations suggesting a resolution that goes first to Christina, because she's going to be, correct me if I'm wrong, she's going to be making allocations of resources within the department, right? No, that is not right. Okay. She will make recommendations. Council makes all the decisions on what is approved or not approved. What? But they give great deference to what the department does. Well, and and in addition, um, the budget, the real budget, has thousands and thousands and thousands of line items. Yeah. What the, what the council sees is um, a really rolled up version of that, and. You know, so maybe one council member who has an agenda for one particular department will will make a fuss and dig down into that. But most of us never see the detail because it would be physically impossible for a human being to do in the amount of time right. Right. that we have. So, um, yeah, you can say council approves it, but council's going to be approving a top line number with maybe two new two two. Um, salary positions funded or something for the senior center. That's all the details we're going to see unless there's a capital expansion or something like that. So, um, yeah, in terms of program level funding, we don't see it. That's, that's exactly what I figured was going on. So Christina really does, even though she's not the final decision maker, the city council is, but she's instrumental. You, know, you, you folks are um, division managers or section managers. Uh, you make the preliminary decisions and it goes up the line and then the, it's modified through the whole process that we're talking about. Gen so, General, let me okay. explain what I how it's worked for me over the years. Okay. So generally, in by the end of May, we have to have all of our uh, requests in into the system by the end of May. We then, uh, the, the finance people, blend all that together, do the, all their magic, and then sometime it, by the end of June, there is a budget meeting with staff and city manager and the finance folks. And that's our time to advocate for what we're requesting. 
we get about two hours um, and they, Harold and, and everybody are in these meetings for uh, solid days as they hear uh, the, the advantages and disadvantages of trying to do something. Once that happens, generally the work goes and finance and Harold and, and the assistant city managers do their thing. But once it gets past that budget meeting, uh, the department directors, which would be Christina for senior services, really have no more say after that, unless somebody has a question that they would ask and then and then go back, they would go back. Then uh, the city manager by the end of August at the latest has to present the budget to city council. Generally, all of September are, are then used as um, presentations uh, to city council to talk about the things that are being proposed to be changed or being requested. And then sometime in October that um, uh, council has on two readings to uh, adopt the budget. And, and Marsha's right. I mean, it's hard enough for us in our own area to have a full understanding of what we do, let alone uh, some seven members of council, and I don't mean this disrespectful at all, but there's there's no way they could learn the detail. It it's a it's a job yeah. to know that, and I think the city with uh, Jim Golden and staff have excellent people that do really good work, and um, I I think they have earned the trust of council, and council knows when to ask questions and and to you know push where where it's important for them. I, I hope I didn't miss speak there, Marsha. <laughs> well, well some council members are savvier about it than others, but uh, and I'm not counting myself in the savvy group particularly, but um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, you know, in terms of budget process, I tend to compartmentalize and so you know, it's a matter of faith, and I, I'm not thinking, oh, wait a minute. I could insist on some detail for the senior center. You know, I, I'll, I will confess, I have not done that in the past. Slow right. learning curve takes yeah. five years. Thank sure. you for correcting yeah. me on that. I was, I was <laughs> apparently wrong on that one part of it there. Yeah, so long story short, the more you're communicating either directly with council or asking Marsha to communicate for you, the more your message will be heard. Okay, mm -hmm. you agree and with that? I do, and, and, and again, the strongest thing is to propose resolutions, um, okay. make, make proclamations. I mean, they, they usually come from residents, but there's a process for getting, you know, if there's like for, in, you know, an age well day or something that, that we would put out um, especially in March and April, um, so that the mayor says something about senior services to the public. That's another good way of communicating, and this board can initiate that and have, you know, have somebody write the resolution and submit it as a, as a resident. No problems with doing that. All right. So here's what I propose. Um, we, <clears throat> we beef up that annual report. We make some uh, starting next next meeting. We uh, do some homework, and on the basis of the next two or three meetings, we will complete our annual report along with recommendations and a resolution to be considered by the city council, and with hopefully with one hundred percent consensus of the board. Uh, it seems to me if we want to have impact. It's got to be something like that, and it's got to be it's got to be logical. It's got to be data based. It's got to be rationale based. You know, it's got to do a good job to have impact. Now, first of all, does everybody kind of agree with my approach? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sounds great. It's working really good for us. Okay. Um, so that will be <laughs> one thing I would ask. I would ask you, Bonnie, if you, if you would. And we talked about this briefly. I think a good starting point would be a demographic profile. 
of who are the people that are in the community that say are 55 and over. You know, not just a description of what the clients who serve, but a demographic of the community. And now that's that's in part a policy decision. How far realistically can we go? You know, can't do everything for everybody. I agree with you. I mean, we can't make one of those the registration process that everybody will look that will work for everybody. We just can't do it. But anyway, I could give you the stat for Boulder County. Yeah. Which probably more months than it needs close and that's 20.5 percent from the COSOA is, is or what? over 65. Oh, okay. Although more seniors are moving into long run. I have, have in fact, things, I yeah. have the COSOA report so if anybody would like to have a copy of it let me know. Yeah. And we are working on having that reported out to the general public here Great. probably in June. Okay. So I think, just add one yeah, thing when I was getting coffee I talked to um, David and um, Robin is there, and they're going to start just doing a little check mark when they receive a phone call on over the counter contact with um, a, a Spanish speaking person. So, just to give us an idea, and they'll do that for a week or so. So, we will understand a little understanding of what we're dealing with. Okay. Oh. Have you done this before? Have you made resolutions for today's example? I was part of uh, the Older Americans Month, uh, so that's May, I believe, and I think we always have a resolution with council that will have the City of Longmont proclaim that we are mm -hmm. supporting older adults and celebrating Older Adults Month, so I think that might be an ideal time to look yeah. at, like, working something in there. Stick a little call to action in that right. resolution. Right, right. Because the mayor would never dare to not observe older Americans. Mm -hmm. That is not happening. Right. Okay. So, yeah. so we're linking this to the budget process. Okay. And, uh, all right. So you're okay with that next time? Yep, right. I can do that. Okay. So, and then you're going to bring up information on, uh, you're going to have more information on the folks that might be participating as board members next time? Yes, I'm going to check with those. And what uh, else? She uh, couldn't make it. She said if somebody was going to be out, then uh, she had not she was a this one, so she didn't make it, of course. We'll okay. meet with her again. And the customer survey, uh, I think we can discuss, I think that'll fold right into the, some of the things that we're talking about. Or if people have their preferences, could they maybe email them, Ronnie, would you be willing to give an email with yeah. their preferences? Okay. Can, we just, just a reminder. We yeah. Can we just turn them in today yeah. if we have them with our name up? Sure. Yeah. And then as far as activities that we were talking about, the list of activities you have a draft of, if anybody has uh, additional information, I'd really appreciate a bit more. Uh, meet um, on some of those activities. I know my memory's like a sieve. So he's referring to the list that I had emailed out yes. a few yes. weeks ago, and Ronnie printed copies of the oh yeah what oh, the board okay. did in 2022. Yeah. That's part of what we include in the annual report. Right. Yeah, I would I would ask each person to uh, review this and. Uh, yeah. Either to me more information or to Brandy, if that's okay. Yeah, they can email us to me directly. And, uh, um, absolutely. Yeah, but, but this is going to be foundational, in my opinion. It's something. City Council. I'll say at some point I'll be transitioning away from the board since Ronnie is the liaison for right. our staff now, right. and I'm gonna I'm gonna work to wrap up this report since I started it and help yeah. Ronnie with whatever he needs to add to it as you okay. guys decide. Yeah, Ronnie, I'd like to meet with you sometime this next month on this issue also. Yes. Sounds good. I, okay. I would just remind as we start emailing that the email should be one way to Ronnie, that it should not start conversations amongst board members because then we start getting oh, into okay. uh, the meetings. Not mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Okay. Yeah. Good. And I'm sorry, am I, I just want to make sure I'm not, so I'm collecting everybody's responses now. 
and then emailing out top three or? I'm going to email you so that's okay. this afternoon. That's okay. I just. Yeah. Ronnie, do you okay. want, um, oh, that's at the next board meeting. So okay. And um, somebody had mentioned that they're not receiving email communication. That's, and okay. I have a note to make sure we, can we address that. Right. Yeah. Okay. And Jeff, I'd like to. Did you flash just, your email? Yep, I'll get you that. So. I'm going to ask okay. you for a couple of minutes. All right. Thank good. you. You have my email. Yeah. All right. Um, have I omitted anything? No. Forgotten anything? No. Screwed something up? Well, okay. doing a good job. <laughs> All right. Let's have a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Julie, is there a second to that? Oh. Uh, she left. Okay. She she okay. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.